here we have some franchisors that are going to share some of their top tips with you. Some of the things that they wish they'd known when they first started out. If I had the money, I would have had the top of the range if I could afford it, like um, you know, electronic dashboard for all my key performance indicators to monitor my network and have a seamless system in place. Definitely I would have that from the beginning, that all the franchisees can use and dial into, and we could use that remotely at head office. I would definitely want that, absolutely. Um, one of the biggest things I kick myself about is I would have liked to have had a bigger national levy from each franchisee. We take only £200 a month from our franchise owners each month, and we're spending over half a million pounds a year on Google, pay-per-click, plus national advertising campaigns in the TV, Daily Mail. So one other thing would be I would have liked to have had a bigger budget for national marketing from the franchise owners of, say, £500 a month each. That would have really helped us grow the business nationally. That's one of the ones I do regret not from the start getting a bigger national levy from the network. It's so important to have continuous support in territory in a head office because you know franchise owners it's a, it's a huge journey for them you know and they don't know anything about our business they don't know anything about sales they've never managed staff before. My critical tip is in the early days if you don't have a huge budget you have to be disciplined because it's so easy if somebody's waving a check in front of you for 15, 20 thousand pounds you know, and you want to grow your business and you think really this person isn't really the quality I'm looking for, however I'll take their money, that's wrong really. You want to be taking high calibre franchise owners who really want to work hard, that's what you need to be doing and that's what you need to do and not be going right, I'll just take that money and just take a few on because it doesn't work and they fail and it damages your brand. So that's the first tip I'll definitely say. Put some fantastic infrastructure in place and as soon as you can afford it, bring in some fantastic business development managers to work alongside you to support your franchise owners if you're on your own, because you can't do it all on your own. So that's what I would definitely have. That's what I would be suggesting. I would say, as a franchisor, you have to be flexible, because although the initial idea is your idea and it's your baby and you have to grow it, you have to adapt and learn to adapt with the people when you're growing your network because you you know, you know, meet lots of different characters along the way um, and they join your network and you have to embrace that and, and be open-minded and open to change as you grow. In terms of what do, do, would I like to have known, um, well, I was a franchisee with a big brand, so I feel that's important to always look at things from the franchisee's perspective. How would they think about a change? How will they think about bringing in this? And the key to me has always been about communication. Before you bring anything into your system, communicate it verbally and then follow it up in writing. And ensure your systems are watertight before you start franchising, because franchisees will expect a 100% system when you start. They know you'll make improvements as you go along, but make sure you've got a rock-solid system. And the, th the third bit of advice I would give would be, in the early days when you start franchising, money's going to be tight as a franchise, or probably, and you might actually bring on some franchisees to actually pay your payroll or ensure you've got enough money to uh, continue. Often that can be the wrong decision because those franchisees that you bring on early on in terms of just taking money could come back to haunt you. So, you know, let's look at this as a long-term thing and let's get the right franchisees on board. Don't just get them on for the wrong uh, reasons. We would like to have done a lot of things differently from when we first started out. Uh, we have made mistakes. Uh, we didn't know about franchising very well. We were inexperienced, so we, we went everywhere, did everything, and it was really enjoyable, but we had to learn, so we've made mistakes, and by doing that, we would, uh, we've obviously gained experience. So if we could have not made those mistakes, we'd have been better off, better, but we, by making mistakes, we've learned so much, so perhaps we had to make those mistakes in the very first place. Uh, I'd give advice to a, a new company to actually join the BFA, that would be a great start. Probably be a QFP if you possibly can, because that's going to give you the all-round support. And actually just be a, a person who wants to be the best person at the, your business, in your industry.
I think it's essential to build a really good team around you from as early on as possible. I was very fortunate at the beginning to have two very key members of my team who had very different skills to me. So I appreciated very early on the different skill set that I needed to manage the business so it would grow and that I couldn't possibly do all aspects myself. I also think that maintaining a very close affinity to your own brand and believing very deeply in your own strong brand values so that they live and breathe through every single aspect of your business is really important. And lastly, my relationship, my very long ongoing relationship and happy relationship with the BFA that began in 2003 um, has been fantastic and, and a very pivotal, played a very pivotal role in how I've grown my business knowing that the BFA has been there with their bank of expertise. So there is one thing we really wish we'd known before we started that we know now, and that is don't get creative. Get the process, set it, and then stick to it. Because in all our years in franchising now, we know that when we get a bright idea, all we are gonna do is get distracted, follow it, gonna spend loads of time and money on this, and it's not gonna take us anywhere until we come back to our core. So don't get creative. If there's one thing that you can take away from this certificate, it's the need to do this properly, and it's the need to take the right advice. You've heard from numerous advisors who can help you franchise your business, from the legals and consultancy to the finances and recruitment. Please do use these people and make sure the ones that you choose are BFA accredited. We put these advisors through a process to ensure they fully understand franchising before we list them. Now, from an ongoing perspective, you can get access to much more support by joining the British Franchise Association. Each franchisor fits into a different category based on their experience in franchising and the growth and maturity of their franchise network. First and foremost, we have our provisional list. This is for companies that are very new to franchising, but they're still taking professional advice with the way they structure their business. They don't necessarily need a franchisee to join, but they do need evidence of a successful business and one that has been proven and one that is ready to recruit. We have our associate membership, which is where you need at least one franchisee that's traded in the UK for at least a year. Full membership is for businesses that have reached what we call internally as critical mass. This is the moment where you as a franchisor live, survive and support your franchisees solely based on your ongoing management service fees. So how do we accredit franchisors? Accreditation is much more about a partnership approach and the association will work with you to help you achieve our standards. We want to see all of this different documentation to ensure that you're operating an ethical business format franchise and evidence that you have a viable business that can sustain the ongoing growth and development of a franchisee network. We want to see a franchisable model that has been proven to work successfully and a business that's trading ethically with a willingness to operate in accordance with the principles of the European Code of Ethics. And we want to see a franchise that is fully disclosed without misrepresentation. So we will be looking at your marketing materials and we will be looking at your projections to make sure that what they're based on is something that is being proven to work. There are many different benefits to belonging to the BFA and we have business development managers based regionally around the UK to help see how BFA membership will fit for your business. I can tell you the main reason businesses decide to join the BFA is for the use of our brand and the credibility that that brand gives them in front of prospective franchisees. It's always comforting for them to know that you've been through our accreditation process. And for you, becoming a franchisor is going to be a new thing. So access to the community the BFA offers through events programmes will help you grow and learn to be a good franchisor. We work hard to promote franchising to the wider community as well, through various media, and principally to do that, we use our members' case studies to gain coverage. So that can be of an additional benefit to you. And finally, all of our members get a listing on the BFA website which is the window to the wider world. If you join the BFA, your franchisees will be able to join the BFA and access a benefit package of their own. We've outlined some of the key points here, and for them, it's just a small fee, but it gives them the opportunity to grow as a new business owner through the educational channels we provide.
It's important for new franchisors to uh, join the British Franchise Association because uh, the British Franchise Association sets the standards, the kite mark uh, for good ethical franchising within the UK. So. Um, to be looked at as a credible franchise opportunity, uh, to be a BFA member really helps you with your recruitment of new investors into the brand. Yeah, I find the BFA um, membership very valuable. We've been a full member for 11 years now, and before that we were an associate for two years and one year a provisional, so that's nearly 15 years. When we have potential franchisees come down to visit us, they like to know we're a, you know, a full member and definitely a member of the BFA. So we find it very, very valuable because it shows that you are an ethical business you know, and you adhere to their strict code of ethics and standards, which I think is fantastic in franchising. The benefits of being part of the BFA, it's actually great to get your accreditation and then for people to know, potential fantasy to know that actually they're going to be part of an ethical company with, with great moral standards. Um, the networking is fantastic to be able to meet and chat to, to other businesses um, and to actually share your processes and, and to learn and to innovate from that really and to, to keep progressing and, and building the company. The benefits of BFA membership, I think firstly credibility. If you want to come into this franchising arena, you really do need to be a BFA member. Why? Because the BFA absolutely drive ethics in franchising and you need to be seen as an ethical franchisor. Thirdly is the massive training and network opportunities with the BFA. The BFA runs some fantastic courses for prospective franchisors and established franchisors where they can develop and they also run networking events all around the country and they really are fantastic for sharing best practice etc. I believe if you want to be a credible franchisor you must join the BFA. I think the benefit of being a member of the BFA and this has been proven by our franchisees is that it's very very professional. A lot of people say if you're not in the BFA we don't want to know you uh, and certainly we're, I think we're the first company to have 100% of our uh, franchisees who are members of the BFA and they all you know, support it as well which is really good for our brand and for the BFA. We've been members since 2011 and some of the benefits of belonging to the British Franchise Association have been the credibility that it gives us. It's shown that we've gone through a process, that we are an ethical franchise, um, and that we want to do things correctly. Among the personal benefits of being in the British Franchise Association um, have been things like the conference, uh, things like the seminars that we have, the QFP process uh, that I went through to qualify as a franchise professional. So that knowledge and experience that I've gained from other franchisees uh, other franchisors rather, um, has been very helpful in helping us to manage our own franchise network. I think our franchise at Oscars has benefited from members of the British Franchise Association because we are engaged with the association. We use their regional meetings, we use the conferences to share best practice and to learn from other people and to find out what's going on in the industry. It clearly helps us in recruiting because we abide by the ethics and that's a very important thing when we're talking to prospective franchisees. But as I've said, it's much more than that. It's about getting engaged with the industry, finding out what problems are coming up on the horizon and what we can do about it, and getting advice on technical things that are coming up within legislation and being able to be ahead of the game through our membership of the British Franchise Association. A franchisor that isn't a member of the British Franchise Association can clearly have a good business, but they set themselves up against barriers because one of the first questions new franchisees ask is, are you a British Franchise Association member? And if the answer is no, then you've then got to go into a lot of detail of why you're not members. And I think that sets the franchise, prospective franchisee up with questions right from day one, which it clearly it's easier not to have. And I think a franchisor that's not a member is missing out on a lot of engagement and a lot of protection within the industry that we offer as an association.